All right, welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. Great to have you in the conversation today. 888-589-8840, the number to call if you want to join the conversation talking about the shooting at Connecticut. And uh, some of my suggestions we explored in the first hour, along with Governor Huckabee, James Dobson, I believe, said exactly the same thing this morning. And, you know, this, this, this one of the callers this morning that talked to me, wanted me, who was connected to this Republican family, wanted me to come out and apologize for what I'd said. And, I, you know, I said, I'm not going to be able to do that because it's the truth. It's the truth. This is what we have been saying. And now is the time to bring these ideas forward because now's the time when this conversation is taking place. And speaking of guns, I mentioned that that situation in San Antonio. This is clip number three. I mentioned that uh, situation in San Antonio where a gun stopped what could have been a mass shooting in a theater. And by the way, that shooting at the Aurora, Colorado Theater, John Lott's got a piece on this. That Batman movie was showing in seven theaters that were closer to this guy's home than the one he chose. He drove 20 minutes to get to a theater. The one thing that set this theater apart from the other six theaters that were also showing the Batman movie was that this theater specifically banned concealed carry weapons in the theater. This guy can read. He wasn't stupid. He was smart. He was a college student. And he knew this is the one place he could go or is going to be a gun-free zone and he could mow these movie patrons down without worrying or fearing about being shot at. And here's a guy named Nick Melly. This is uh, this Clackamas mall shooting that happened last week. And two people, uh, I don't know if two people died or two people were injured. In I think two, yeah, three people were dead. He killed two innocent people that were shoppers at this Clackamas mall. I've been to that mall. It's outside of Portland. Uh, and he then he turned the gun on himself. So two people died, but it was a crowded mall. And he's in there with a lot of rounds. And this guy named Nick Melly, he's a 22-year-old guy. And this guy was at the Clackamas Town Center. And he has a concealed carry permit. And he was armed that night, carrying a legal weapon. And the shooting begins, and he positions himself and draws his weapon. And he describes, we've got a little montage of his interview with a local television statement about what happened. Let's listen. He was work working on his rifle and he kept pulling the charging handle and hitting the side. As I was going down, I was going to pull. I saw someone in the back of the Charlotte move and I knew that if I fired and missed, I could end up hitting them. I'm not beating myself up because I didn't shoot him, but I know that after he saw me, the, I think the last shot he fired was the one that he used on himself. So this guy's saying, look, I drew down on this guy, and he saw me drawn down on him. I didn't shoot because there was an innocent bystander behind him, and I was concerned about that. So he had his wits about him. But the next shot, he says, the guy fired was the one that he used on himself. You know, it's interesting, too. Somebody else made this point that, you know, number one, this gunman, forced his way into that Sandy Hook school, forced his way in, shot his way into the school, uh, which means that there was nobody there to stop him. There was nobody there that was armed or had a weapon that could stop this guy from breaking into the school. So this guy forces his way into the building. He could have been shot before he ever got to that classroom if a member of the school staff had been packing heat, had been carrying a weapon. And I'm saying, look, we are talking about the most precious beings that we have, our children. Innocent, vulnerable, helpless. They require adults to protect them. And we ought to do it. And the best way to do it is to pray and set a guard, just like the Bible says. Nehemiah 4.9, we prayed and we set a guard. And that is the key to providing security and protection for our school children. We need to start praying to God again in our public schools and doesn't matter what the Supreme Court says. I've read the Constitution frontwards, backwards, upside down, left to right. There's not a single solitary mention in there about a ban on prayer. It's not even talked about. It's not addressed. It cannot possibly be unconstitutional because it's not even in there. So we can read the Constitution, what the Supreme Court did, a gross display of judicial tyranny. It's time for us just to ignore that because, not because we're rebellious, but because we care about kids. And we want to invite God to come, manifest his presence, and help us to protect their safety. And the point this other guy made is when this guy turned the gun on himself is when he heard the policeman pounding down the hallway. 
That's when he turned the gun on himself. He would have kept shooting if it hadn't been for what? A show of force. The police, whom he knew were armed with weapons, were in the hallway. And that's when he decided to take his own life. So once again, force is the only language that they uh, understand. Now let's play clip number 12. Louis Gohmert is a representative. He's a congressman from the state of Texas. And um, he was on a talk show yesterday, and he was one of the only lawmakers that was willing to tell it like it is. Here's what he had to say. Tell it like it is. Here's what he had to say talking to Chris Wallace on Fox News. Once we have this actually open dialogue about, uh, about the situation, Chris, you find out that, and John, John Lott's done some great uh, uh, investigation and study into this, Every mass killing of more than three people uh, in, in recent history has been in a place where guns were prohibited. These guns, except for one, they choose this place. They know no one will be armed. You know, having been a judge and having reviewed photographs of, of these horrific scenes and, and knowing that children have these defensive wounds, gunshots through their arms and hands as they try to protect themselves, and, and hearing the heroic stories of the principal lunging, trying to protect Chris. I wish to God she had had an M4 in her office locked up, so when she heard gunfire, she pulls it out, and she didn't have to lunge heroically with nothing in her hands, but she takes him out, takes his head off before he can kill those precious kids. And see, I'm with Louis Gohmert on this. This is about kids. There isn't anything insensitive about what we're doing at all here. We're trying to protect kids. And now's the time to have the conversation. Now's the time to advance. Now's the time to be able to use... Uh, use this tragedy for some redemptive purpose. This is what God always does. If there is a tragedy, he's always got some redemptive purpose in mind. And one of the things, I'm not saying this is all we do, but I'm saying one of the things we can do is take steps right now to keep this kind of thing from happening again. Let's grab a phone call before the break. Let's go to Harold, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Harold, welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? Hi, Brian. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah, you bet. Um, I just wanted to say I agree with everything you said about well, today and last Friday, and I also agree with what uh, Governor Huckabee was saying. I just want to make a, a quick observation from um, somebody that's, you know, grown up around guns. Um, my forefathers, your, probably your forefathers, uh, most people I know in growing up here in Oklahoma, grew up around guns, and I don't know anybody that's went and done what, what this person did, okay? And uh, it's a moral issue. It's not a gun issue. And that's, that's all I wanted to say. All right, Harold, I appreciate that. Uh, thank you very much for that. And that's why, you know, it's a moral issue. It's not a gun issue. He's exactly right. Uh, you know, and this guy was breaking gun control laws. The people are saying, we got to have we got to have stricter laws on gun control. This guy was 20. He was not eligible for a gun permit in Connecticut. Got to be 21. So he was breaking law. It's just another illustration is if you have laws if you outlaw guns it's only the law-abiding people that are going to turn them in and it's the outlaws then are going to be the only ones that are carrying guns and they look as john lott pointed out they look for gun-free zones and that's where they target innocent helpless victims focal point afr talk